What up? Welcome back, everybody, to the 2017 Portland, Oregon Regional Championships, where we are ready to get underway here with the top four. Three more matches, and we'll have a crown champion here in Portland, Oregon. Yes. Taking home $1,000, 200 championship points, and pride. The pride of the Pacific Northwest. That was romantic. <laughs> uh, to be fair, there's three players from the Pacific Northwest left. Um, Aaron Zhang is the only other player that's not from the Pacific Northwest. So uh, Aaron kind of trying to bring this away from the Pacific Northwest. Oh yeah, but think about this. So we have Canada versus the USA right now, right? Yeah. The defending think, champion, the defending Portland champion is Canadian in Randy Kwok. Yes. Who didn't... Who wasn't able to manage to make it out here. Uh, very unfortunate. Randy, always solid. One of the most historically solid players there is. Um, but my little point was maybe this player would have a problem with identifying as American. And then maybe we have the international Canada versus Japan battle. That's fair. He, he <laughs> did grow up a little bit in Japan. Yeah, and, Nippon uh, Bonsai, dude. Yeah, absolutely. And Hawaii. we are ready to <laughs> get underway between the two players in Conan Thompson and Max Douglas. Max Douglas will be on the bottom of your screen versus Conan Thompson, who is going to be on top of your screen. As we jump into team preview, Max is going to be running Tapu Koko, Celesteela, Porygon 2, Arcanine, uh, Gigalith, and Garchomp. Celesteela, Garchomp, Gyarados, Mimikyu, uh, Tapu Koko, and Gigalith for Conan's side. Is Conan the only Mimikyu in Top Cut? I thought there was yes. more than one. No, wow. Was the only uh, Mimikyu, very good mom. Um, this team actually sort of similar to the team that won Battle Road Gloria in Japan. Um, I believe that is not on purpose. Uh, but I believe um, best is a strong word, but I believe Conan has at least the most interesting team, um, not only in Top 8, but like in the remaining uh, tournament. Um, he's got some really cool tech here that I won't want to spoil for you because that would ruin the hype for me and you. And I care about you, the viewer. Um, just based on simple matchup, Coco looks pretty annoying on both sides as part of what Coco does. Um, countering it is often difficult because a lot of the things that actually have a good time against Coco just don't have a good time against the metagame. So you're going to see Coco play a pivotal role in, in both. Uh, Garchomp on both teams, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Gigalith on both teams. Um, Celsteel on both teams. It's going to be kind of an odd mirror situation, especially since you have uh, two Trick Amusers, though varying in Porygon 2 and Mimikyu. Um, I don't think either player has an inherent... Um, Advantage in team Yeah, thank up. you. Uh, blinking on that one. Um, but the the Coco sets probably differ. Um, yeah, th I think the set variation is what you're going to come down to most than the mo more than Mon variation. Um, I th Max, to me, has more tools to be immediately offensive. Tapu Coco and Tapu Coco uh, both come out for... Both come out for... Uh, <laughs> You they got this, buddy. They both come out for <laughs> both players. Gyarados and Porygon 2. Uh, Porygon 2 gets an attack boost. Gyarados' is, uh, Intimidate drops oh the my. attack on Porygon 2. I believe that is actually a physical Porygon 2. Yes, it is. I we saw a return earlier. Oh, yeah. We yeah. actually noticed that Conan's Tapu Koko went first and activated the electric surge. Yes. I'm not sure if that means that it's a speed tie or what. Um, it could be. Uh, again, hard to know. It was part of the annoyance with Coco. Uh, really, any mirror situation is knowing who's actually faster because that plays such a pivotal role in your game. Um, I, I forgot that names were automatically set to English now because I was like, well, Conan has a double bluff going. Um, <laughs> so in the current metagame, if you're running Gyarados, there's absolutely no reason to run blue Gyarados if you can help it. Red Gyarados can... Uh, bluff bounce. So that's a double bluff for Conan because he has a Japanese cart. So he could also have, like, the name being Japanese for him wouldn't mean anything. But uh, we did see the Cherish Ball, I believe. Yeah, we see Nature's Madness from uh, Conan's Top of Coco go first. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, uh, Max tries uh -huh. to switch out with the Volt Switch, but instead Good. cannot into the Garchomp as Garchomp from Porygon 2, or sorry, Garchomp gets hit by an Ice Beam from Porygon 2, doing a lot of damage right there. I mean, to me, that first turn summarized how this game is going to go. There were both. Good reads by both players that were both punished by both players. The Volt Switch was nullified by the ground typing the Garchomp, but he followed that up safely with the Ice Beam just in case that actually happened. Um, unfortunately, we uh, that revealed 
sort of limited information for Conan. We do know that he's Volt Switch, Coco, but we don't know what item it has, which is a common feature. Um, Nature's Madness is usually a bulkier set. Nature's Madness from uh, Conan's top of Coco, again, connecting on that Porygon 2, bringing it down 50% of its health. Uh, as Max has to Volt Switch out onto that top of Coco, maybe revealing the fact that it has a choice item, which a lot of people do have with a uh, Volt Switch, you know, being able to sw switch in, switch out, you know. Well, if you believe that it is a choice item, and if you judge Conan's Coco based on that damage, you might come to the conclusion that that is a Salt Vest Garchomp. A what? A Salt Vest. Fair. Oh, no, Garchomp. Uh, Coco, I'm sorry. <laughs> fair. I, I'm That's saying fair. Garchomp because it's blazing in front of my face right now. Yeah, and we see we have Conan's Garchomp now go for a Tectonic Rage. Going to send Porygon to the, the core of the Earth. And pretty much pick up the KO. I mean, that's a deadly combination with any Super Fang-esque move. Um, that's basically a, a guaranteed KO on anything. And you could say that for a lot of double taps, um, which is to say uh, attacking the same mon with both. But, um, no, it's like uh, being able to remove just a clean 50% from your opponent. And, like, their bulk becomes irrelevant unless they've just intimidated you or have some, like, weird tech to prevent it. And it's, like, very safe as a removal option. Um, Conan does take the slight lead, not out of the wood. Like, the, uh, if, if we're uh, biting into Dwee's theory that uh, Coco is choice, we um, have a situation in which Max's Coco is actually having a good time. You lose the Porygon 2, that might matter more in the long term, but immediately uh, Max has a chance to gain momentum. Garchomp switches out, going to go into Gyarados, going to go for an Intimidate onto the Garchomp over on Max's side. Uh, you know, Garchomp really enjoys having its attack stat. Uh, can easily bounce back with a possible Sword Sense. Looking at the uh, HP stat on Garchomp, it actually is higher than usual, so maybe in some bulk is invested. As the top of Coco on Conan's side goes for a Volt Switch, so that's not choice, so maybe I am... I don't know. I don't know what I know about Max's top of Coco anymore. Okay, I mean... Garchomp comes in, though. Uh, I hope he posts Dazzling Gleam like I thought. Yep, Top okay. Coco goes for a Dazzling Gleam. Going to be able to pick the KO on Garchomp. Uh, doing about 30% to that Gyarados. So, uh, fair. I mean, that's a good knockout as Garchomp on Max's side goes for a Poison Jab here. Hitting that Gyarados and bringing it down to less than 50%. Yeah, so, uh, that was the momentum kind of turn that Max had available based uh, from the Porygon 2 KO. Um, and... If you believe what I said earlier about Coco being Assault Vest on Conan's side, this means that even if Max isn't the faster Coco, he's the more scary one. Um, the, uh, Max's own Coco needs to be more preemptively damaged for Conan's Coco to come in and stop it from doing a lot of work. Well, we see Conan's top of Coco switch in now. Uh, so far, it's possibly won every single speed time. Maybe Conan's top of Coco is just slightly faster. Possibly. Um, I mean, I don't. I wonder how the speeds are actually working because just based on the dazzling gleam damage, it feels odd to me to think that Coco is modest uh, on the Gyarados. I mean, um, but if you're timid, and the assault vest one possibly is faster than you, why? Maybe like he took away from a little bit of speed and a lot of power to put into bulk, so he has like the kind of all-around stats. Um, the all-around Coco. Yeah, but like in general, like if you're a choice specs, you want to just like smack him up a little bit. I hope you guys can like hear the hand, sound of my hand smacking my other <laughs> hand. It's not Dewey, I promise. All right, we have Conan's top of Coco now. Go for a Thunderbolt onto the top of Coco on oh, next okay. side. Picks up the KO with the electric terrain. So just enough to squeak by as we have. Oh. All right, we have the Tectonic Rage coming out from Max's Garchomp. Gonna hit this Tapu Coco. Gonna be able to easily pick up the KO. Oh, easily. Oh, easily. Um, but that I wonder sets up, if he even had to use it. That sets up. Well, I mean, well, he, he didn't he want to hit his own Coco. Just in case. Yeah, but um, I, I wonder if he's still unconvinced that it's a speed tie. Because I'm pretty convinced it is not a speed tie. But regardless, this is a good opportunity for Gyarados to be able to set up a Dragon Dance yes. here. And there we do. We see the Gyarados set up the Dragon Dance to try to set up. And now it's going to be outspeeding. The Garchomp and possibly anything else that Max has in the back. Worth noting that Conan's earlier use of Tectonic Rage would prevent Gyarados from using a possible Z move. Uh, Gyarados often have 
uh, Z moves on the Dragon Dance sets, and they really have a pretty decent variety of what those Z moves could be. Uh, most often, uh, Water, uh, the Hydro Vortex from Waterfall, the tec uh, Tectonic Rage from Earthquake, uh, which is impossible because Conan used that one on Garchomp, or the new shiny Supersonic Sky Strike yep. from uh, the event Bounce Gyarados from Japan. Yeah. Uh, both players have Gigalith get sent out. Going to activate the sand stream. I missed which one went first. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I was, I was like, just going in on that analysis. Yeah, dude. Um, the Gyarados is looking... F it's in an odd position because normally you would be like, oh, Gyarados, that's pretty good for a rock type and a Garchomp. But it's, like, a bit less than 50% of its health. And uh, I, there was an Intermediate earlier, right? I don't believe Garchomp had... Oh, yeah, yeah, Garchomp had its attack stat dropped. Okay. Um, so Waterfall might be able to do some work, but I expect Gigalith to be able to pick up the KO on Gyarados, take a Waterfall. Yeah, Gyarados goes for the Waterfall. Maybe Max protected on Pokemon. Oh! No! Gigalith hangs on with three hit points, but oh, Gigalith but those speed gets, actually yeah. mattered. Yeah, it did, man. It did. So the Gigalith is able to outspeed uh, and pick up the KO on Max's own Gigalith. So, unfortunate. Protected the wrong Pokemon yeah, there. Yeah, I, uh, honestly, I don't know if he should have protected at all. Um, if you think that you take the Waterfall, you can risk the Tygo for Rock Slide remove Gyarados. If he, w if he actually Waterfalls your Gyarados, or your Garchomp, you take it, probably, because he's fairly bulky, just judge on the HP number. Um, they activate Rough Skin, you probably hit them, and if they even take that, the sand will help you. A bit so, of a misplay right there from yeah, Max, in I my opinion. Yeah, I don't agree with that turn, which is very unfortunate because I think he was playing pretty well uh, throughout the game. Gyarados now protecting itself as Garchomp goes for a Poison Jab into that Protect, though. Great call right there from Conan, but I just don't think Max has the pieces. As Garchomp goes for a Rock Slide here, going to connect on the Garchomp. Minimal amount of damage thanks to the Ground Resist. Ground yeah. typing that resists Rock, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I think it's a little interesting that Max chose to forego Celesteela. His only real answer is Tapu Koko, and like, uh, Tapu Koko is, of course, uh, very threatening and spooky. But um, he has his own Tapu Koko that seems to be putting in a lot more work than Conan's. Um, I don't think he has to make major adjustments in terms of uh, game two matchup. I th I think his selected Pokemon were pretty good. And he, 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 if Sand lasts long enough, he could potentially get enough protects and like try to Earthquake. Don't think it would KO. But um, well, I th if there's I a crit, there's a way. And remember, yeah. it would be single target at that point. Yeah. Uh, I think what I want more from Max is just um, a bit more. What's the good a prediction on Conan? I think predict or like just think. Be careful. Think out your situation. Um, I don't. Uh, the protect on Chomp earlier was incorrect. Garchomp protects itself, not going to get KO'd yet. And now we see if Gyarados gets KO'd. That opens up an opportunity, possibly. Uh, Gyarados is buffeted by the sand, and Gyarados hangs mm. on. Kona knew that would have happened, so now Max is going to need another, pretty much another protect and a and critical hit hope on that, that earthquake. that sand doesn't run out. I don't. I'm waiting for the box to come up <laughs> that says number of turns remaining, but they're telling me the types. I know those. Oh, yeah, he doesn't even go for doesn't it. Doesn't even. Gyarados just goes for the waterfall and picks up the KO. So, Conan Thompson takes game one here. Conan needs a win, and he qualifies for day one of the World Championships. So, Conan's just one win away from the World Championships. Oh, he gets it with second place? Yes. Okay. Um, I think that it's an interesting transition from Max in top eight to Max in top four. I think he did a lot better job uh, containing his opponent in the last set compared to this one. Um the Gyarados got a little out of hand, and I, he kind of enabled it. Right. Um, I mean, there was that situation know. where he, where Max burned the Tectonic Rage on the top of Coco. Maybe just a little bit worried that the Earthquake wouldn't have been able to pick up the KO, and I guess it was Intimidate just to ensure that I mean, he that's, the KO on the that top of Coco. That was okay, but I have more issue with protecting Chomp when he decided to go for the Giggle. Right. I mean, you saw it right after that that he survived the Waterfall. Yeah. And even, it, like... If he does target your Garchomp, it looks kind of bulky. If it does, and like, uh, like, okay, let's say he targets Garchomp. You don't protect either one. It takes Rough Skin. If it KOs, um, you then you Rock Slide, and then it's Gigalith versus Gigalith. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, just um, well, now he knows. Now he knows that the the Gyarados will survive the waterfall. The, the, I would hope or, the Gyarados survive the waterfall. Survives the waterfall. I mean. 
If the Gyarados did survive the waterfall, how did it evolve in the first place? Um, real quick, Conan's pretty fashionable. I choose that same shirt for my custom trainer. Um, but so he's a better player than you. <sighs> he's a, in the top a, cut, Kimo. Does that make you inherently better? <laughs> Tapu Koko and Garchomp are led for uh, Max's side. Again, we see Conan's Tapu Koko set up the terrain. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that Conan's straight up is faster, unless he's just absolutely winning all the speed ties. Not a ton of adjustment. Gyarados and Garchomp are led out. Uh, Conan has a Gyarados, and Garchomp has been sent out for Max, yeah. respectively. Mm -hmm. So, oh boy, let's go. Um, Game two. I want Max to press Dazzling Gleam right here. Uh, I don't think, it, just based on the Gyarados performance and what happened last game, I'm a bit skeptical that Conan will risk the Gyarados. I think he'll want to like do, I, I, think, I think he thinks that Max will just do the same thing. So I want to see Dazzling Gleam just smack that incoming Garchomp and get your own Garchomp out of there. It's not doing a dang thing. Okay, Tapu Koko ah. goes for a Sky Drop. Conan's Tapu Koko going to bring Max's Tapu Koko up in the sky as Garchomp uses his turn to set up a Sword Dance, so that something that we yeah. haven't seen from Max's in the set yet as Gyarados uses his turn to set up a Dragon Dance. So we're in an interesting position where the Z move on Gyarados becomes incredibly important. If it is Water Z, he absolutely needs to take out that Koko right now and let his own Koko go to the wayside. If you are Flying Z... Um, that's kind of annoying because you should remove Garchomp, but then the Max's Coco will still be around and KO your Gyarados. Well, it depends on how this Gyarados is training. Uh, so he should probably just... They should both just press Protect. <laughs> no, well... Mm, yeah, press Protect, and then, like, Sky Drop again. Oh, because like, then, like, he can, like, KO the... Tapu Coco. Tapu Coco now releases uh, Max's Tapu Coco. And Tapu Coco gets Comes down to, to all right. Oh, he's the going waterfall. For the f oh, so Gyarados outspeeds the Tapu Coco. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So. Oh, but Tapu Coco flinches. Man. Garchomp gets to go for the point jab. Gonna connect onto the Tapu Coco and most likely not even pick no up the KO. No way! Such bulky Tapu Cocos out I on mean, both sides. I mean, that's only plus one, but like, instead of plus two, but like, wow! Big flinch. The Big flinch, flinch was huge. Um, very unfortunate turn for Max. That potentially game ceiling. Um, sometimes the sway of the RNG is so powerful that even if it happens within the early turns, it can seal you up. Um, of course, Max ha should have options to play around this. Uh, he does have Intimidate on his team. He does have a Celesteela, a Porygon 2 on his team. Um, Gyarados is not necessarily the end, but that made it a lot harder for Max. Yeah, and Max has to switch out the uh, top of Goku right here. Going to switch uh. in the Gigalith. Uh, all right, going to... Yeah, I don't. It 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 is a Sandville, uh, Garchomp. Actually, I don't think we saw rough skin damage coming from it. Oh really? I don't think we saw rough skin damage from it last time. I was oh, supersonic sky the supersonic sky that's strike a good, comes uh, out. See dance uh, the. I mean the Gyarados looks kind of silly flying through the air. But um, really important information. Um, Conan really wants to seal this game up. I did consider if he would keep the Z-move concealed just for what he, what is very potentially um, a clinched up final. Um, but like, why risk it? Oh, critical critical hit. hit. I am skeptical that mattered. Potentially mattered. Not going to say it definitely didn't, but probably didn't. Um, so we have a quick 2-4 situation for uh, the set. Three. In which one? 3-4. I don't think we've seen. Oh, it. Conan yeah. left. Oh, yeah, no, Coco Conan. left. Conan. Coco switched. Tapu Conan, <laughs> a, a little inferior to Tapu Kimo. Um, but no, uh, th th I think the same thing that I was going for basically applies. In which Gyarados isn't really being stopped anymore. Celesteela could. The Coco is, uh, but the Coco's weak on health. But so is the Gig the Gigalith is in waterfall range because we saw it took a waterfall with three HP last turn. So unless the Celesteela can take the Thunderbolt and then continue to have a presence throughout the set, Max is done. Yep, Gigalith protects itself as Tapu Koko goes for a Thunderbolt boosted by that electric train, although it is a much bulkier Tapu Koko. Oh, Not a big okay. KO on Celesteela, but does get a paralysis oh. here. And now Gyarados goes for a Waterfall. Going to go target down into the Protect as Celesteela goes for a Heavy Slam. Going to get a Beast boost most likely from picking up the KO on this Tapu Koko. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the still an uphill battle. Still, up, still uh, yes. an uphill battle. Uh, the defense boost is nice, but like you've probably taken enough damage from that Thunderbolt to make it irrelevant. Um, 
The Gyarados is still very threatening. Um, it's not uh, Gyarados isn't absolutely guaranteed to outspeed Tapu Koko, but I believe most of them are trained to do that after Dragon Dance. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Conan's was that way. Um, the paralysis kind of annoying, but I mean one of the most annoying things about the paralysis. Um, assuming you can even take the waterfall, is that in conjunction with the paralysis, you have the waterfall flinch rate. So, Garchomp doesn't care about the Gigalith. He can go for an earthquake fairly easily, thanks to his partner Gyarados' flying typing. Um, I think that Conan well, has this wrapped up. Well, we saw the... the uh, so, the Gyarados outspeeds the Tapu Koko in the back, barring a speed tie, because, remember, it flinched from the waterfall. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Very, I'm just very, my bases very with my new analysis. training in terms of having the stats match up to the way they should be between Conan's entire team. Uh, yeah, so oh, yeah, unfortunate. The leech seed could have actually come into play. I, I don't know if he's Firefang Garchomp. I forget if he revealed that. I don't think. I don't think there's any way for Max to be able to come back from this. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty over. I, I don't. And I'm very unfortunate because. Um, Conan's huge boost in momentum came from that waterfall flinch. Uh, I, I I don't want to say Conan would have lost, but it at least wouldn't have been so lopsided. Um, you know, I c c congrats congratulations to Conan. I just I don't see a way out. I mean, there's if not. this Gyarados can outspeed that top of Coco, there's there's just no way out. Yeah. No, it's over. Yeah. Oh boy. That's a, that, yep. Gyarados outspeeds the top of Coco and picks up the KO with the waterfall. That does it. Uh, Conan should be advancing to the the finals. The finals, and that actually means that he has secured himself a spot at, at day one tournament. of the World Championships in Anaheim. So congratulations to Conan on earning your day one invite after you know pretty much winning this set so easily, in my opinion. You in know, his I, eyes. I think that makes Conan the uh, first Japanese player to have clinched his invite. I don't think any of the other <laughs> Japanese players have clinched invites. That's true. That is very true. So, uh, again, really coming down to it, game two came down to the flinch. That yes. flinch. Uh, that could have been a knocked out Gyarados right off the bat. So The sky drop tech is also very good. I had a similar tech on my team. Um, you, you use Coco's generally fastest base speed to um, nullify one of the opponent's slots, generally the threatening one, and use your other Pokemon to set up in such a position that the momentum just s snowballs your opponent to oblivion. And there you have it. Max forfeits the game, and Conan Thompson moves on to the finals where he awaits the winner between Hayden McTavish and Aaron Zhang. So Aaron needs a win to qualify yep. for the World Championships. And, I mean, now Conan is guaranteed $750 to take home. That's a lot of money. And a lot of championship points, too. Just enough to put him over the top to go to the World Championships. He might be the 10th North American player to do so. Kind of lost count. I don't know the exact numbers, but... It's, uh, there's not too many. 10's not a lot. Right. I mean, go, coming down to some analysis here for the, the set that you all just witnessed, the the key plays of the game, not protecting the Garchomp. If, yeah. he, if Max did not protect that Garchomp in game one, that could have opened up opportunities for him to be able to defeat Conan in game one. Game two really just came down to that flinch. Yeah, game two, there's not really a lot you can say in like terms of misplays or anything. There was just not a lot of chance for Max to really make a recovery. The momentum had already gotten past the peak of, the, the point of no return, really. Yeah. Um, ga the game one misplay is unfortunate, um, but I don't think it was significant enough to be like, well, you don't deserve to win. Um, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Like, uh, it's a game that requires you, at to, at some point, to make zero mistakes. And to be fair, though, Max probably did not know the damage calc on that Gyarados anyways. Probably not. So no, I, I didn't. You know, still congratulations to Max. You know, top four finish here at the Portland, Oregon Regional yeah. Championships. Gives him a lot of championship points and also $500. So it's uh, a lot of money. That's a lot of money, yeah. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll return the other half of the bracket between Hayden McTavish and Aaron Zhang here from Portland, Oregon. Stay tuned. <laughs> 